exciting motorsports on television. Today's action comes to you from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where the world's best monster truck drivers, all in championship races for the Camel Mud Monster Truck Championship Series, put their mighty machines to the test in head-to-head -head competition. There's Barefoot, Bigfoot, the Master of Disaster, the Carolina Crusher, and the Incredible Gravedigger. And later, from Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York, Super Tracks will bring you the U.S. Harvard Association Super Modified Mud Racers at their finest. The All-Stars of the Camel Mud Racing Championships, Insanity, Super Trooper, Mud Patrol, and Naturally Wired. Get down and get dirty today on Super Tracks. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, as we get ready for the one-shot qualifying session for the drivers involved in this U.S. Hobbit Association war. Here in the Camel Monster Truck World Championship Series, in qualifying, each driver gets one attempt at a 200-foot-long straight-line course for qualifying positions within the eight-truck field. And the very first machine up is the reigning world champion on the Camel Tour, Fred Schaefer in the Barefoot Chevrolet. Airborne leap and Schaefer will kick off qualifying with an elapsed time of 4.56 seconds. As you can see, with a tremendous run up area to the first impact point, these trucks will be literally airborne for the second half of the field, and Schaefer shows just how rough the landing is going to be on the finish line ramp. The next machine up from Indianapolis, Indiana, Tim Adams and the Crimson Crusher, a brand new 1991 Ford F350. A rather conservative launch for Adams, but the Crimson Crusher records an elapsed time of 8.55 seconds nonetheless. Obviously, as you can see on the replay, Adams is more concerned with just getting the truck into the qualified field and obviously will not lean on it until we get into eliminations. The next machine up on the starting line, a brand new piece of equipment for the 1991 U.S. Harbor Association season. Stan Hall and the new Ford called Big Boss. Hall, certainly aggressive enough, records an elapsed time of 7.76 seconds. That'll give him the number two spot right now. But on the replay, you can see that Hall was not lined up straight at the impact point, and that caused a wild sideways run for the remainder of the attempt. Meanwhile, one of the home state favorites, Minnesota's own barely tame Ford F-350 with Jim Thomas behind the wheel, leaves the line. Thomas takes down a finish line marker on what appeared to be a perfectly straight run that somehow got out of shape before the finish line. And there's the reason a sideways bounce in the middle of the crush cars gave the barely tamed Ford an elapsed time of 8.75 seconds. But now the 1989 U.S. Auto Association Rookie of the Year, Rob Fusion, the first blood Ford, takes to the air. An incredible run. Fuchs puts down a 4.89 second elapsed time to be the first truck to truly threaten the barefoot Chevrolet. Take a look at this head-on shot, airborne, and a beautiful landing. The home-built machine from upstate Illinois definitely will be a contender. Meanwhile, the master of disaster Chevrolet, another Minnesota campaigner driven by Doug Spanier, leaves the line. Spanier down on power at the impact point, and that caused the machine to literally drop out of the air, and the bounce was nearly uncontrollable. The master of disaster Chevrolet at 7.99 seconds will slide into the center of the qualified field right now. But here's the killer, Andy Brass in the legendary Bigfoot Ford shooting for number one. An incredible flight and an equally astounding landing. Andy Brass, with a mark to beat of 4.56 seconds, records a 3.60 second elapsed time to take the number one spot. And that will leave only the most popular machine, at least with Chevrolet body panels, on the ground, the Gravedigger. An incredible flight and an equally beautiful landing. Dennis Anderson records a 4.43 second elapsed time to slide into the number two qualifying spot. And meanwhile, on the other side of the Metrodome, preparations are underway for what could well be the single most incredible motorcycle stunt ever attempted. 
in just a little while, we'll take a look at one of the most death-defying feats ever performed indoors with a stock Yamaha motorcycle against the world. In qualifying for the Monster Truck Division, Bigfoot obviously led the program at 3.60 seconds, but face it, the Grave Digger, the Barefoot Chevrolet, and the First Blood Ford are all within killing range of the legendary Big Blue Ford from St. Louis. When we return, we'll take a look at the sport that's still fun even when things go wrong. It's time for the world's quickest and fastest indoor motorsports machines, the U.S. Harvard Association Super Modified Mud Racers. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island in New York. We are just about ready for the world's quickest and fastest indoor machines, the U.S. Harvard Association Camel Series Super Modified Mud Racing Entries. An 80-foot long course of 36-inch deep mud with the situation in which the driver must run full throttle across that 80-foot pit and then stop within another 80 feet or risk disqualification. The four quickest drivers will qualify for the Camel Shootout, which will determine the overall Super Modified Mud Racing Championship. The beauty of the category is in its diversity, with a myriad of engine types and body styles represented throughout the class. The U.S. Hot Rod Association is the best in motorsports. Each year, the U.S. Hot Rod Association sponsors more than 50 events from coast to coast. See the stars of super tracks in person at a stadium or an arena in your area. U.S. Hot Rod Association competition features the best in mud racing, all classes of pulling, and, of course, monster truck racing. It's great family fun. So watch for the stars of the U.S. Hot Rod Association coming soon to an arena near you. The first machine on the starting line in our 80-foot super modified mud racing competition is the chopped section narrowed and lowered four-wheel drive Ford Ranger called the Gambler. Hard on the brakes, but with plenty of room to spare, the Gambler comes to rest. The nitrous oxide injected, fuel injected Ford wedge powered machine records an elapsed time of 2.23 seconds, skimming over the surface of the mud exactly the way it's done and then coming to rest in the sand shutdown area. But here's the three time and defending world super modified mud racing champion, Tom Martin and the Super Trooper. An incredible run. Martin will stop with more than enough room to spare. The elapsed time, 1.86 seconds on a picture-perfect pass. That will put Martin, obviously, number one in the program as we are vying for four available positions. Here's the 1985 world champ, New Hampshire's David Ray and the full-bodied Ford Ranger called Midnight Magic. Another great run, using up a lot of shutdown area, but David Ray brings it to a stop with five feet left in the 80-foot shutdown area. The elapsed time for the 3,000-pound Ford, 1.99 seconds. That will qualify right now number three in the four-car shootout field. From the state of New Jersey, it's Rich Marcini and his nitrous oxide-injected big block Chevrolet-powered 1932 coupe called Naturally Wired. Marcini, a great run, and he uses up more distance down there than anybody has so far. The elapsed time for the bright yellow 32 Chevy, 2.12 seconds. Believe it or not, that may not hold up for a starting position in the shootout program. Right now, it takes a run of 2.23 to get in the field, but coming up next, it's the machine that took Tom Martin to three straight world championships, the Mud Patrol. Paul Schaefer, the driver, a good run, yanking the left front wheel. The elapsed time for the Bug Patrol 32 Chevy, 2.04 seconds. That will qualify in the number three spot right now. Meanwhile, back on the line, it's a father and son team out of Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Preston Ward, the elder member of the family, a longtime champion on the U.S. Hopper Association Trail. His young son, Matt, the actual owner and builder of this 1930 Ford Model A. The nitrous-injected Ford wedge-powered machine on this run being driven by the younger member of the family in one of his very first championship indoor events. Shutting it down right at the finish line, keeping it straight and locking up the brakes. Matt Ward records an elapsed time of 2.26 seconds. It won't qualify for the final four. 
You can see the machine skimming the surface of the mud exactly like it's supposed to be done in the sport of super modified mud racing. The objective to keep the machine above the slime and apply power rather than trying to plow through it. The next man up in qualifying is Greg Noonan and the Nancy's Nightmare, a traditional piece of equipment when it comes to super modified mud racing configurations. A fiberglass body Jeep CJ funny car, but Noonan runs into problems and goes down like the Titanic. And he is upset. Obviously, the machine lost power just off the starting line, and that gives you an indication of just how deep this mud is with a 3,000-pound machine on top. Noonan seems to take it all in stride, though, and that's all part of super modified mud racing. Now the big question for the U.S. Auto Association officials is how do you get him out? Meanwhile, back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Dennis Anderson readies the 1950 Chevrolet known as the Grave Digger for the first round of monster truck eliminations. When Super Tracks returns, it's going to be all out monster truck war. Stay with us. Alex Furlong is about to die and enter the year 2000. With qualifying complete, we return to the Metrodome in Minneapolis, where Bigfoot leads qualifying for this incredible U.S. Hobbit Association Camel World Championship event. Earlier, we talked about pre-event preparation with the man behind Bigfoot, Bob Chandler. Well, we have an entire machine shop for, for building the chassis and part of some of the engine work. We have a, an engine room, a uh, clean room, supposedly, where we put the assemble engines. Uh, we have people that specialize in wiring. Uh, one of our crew starts from scratch with these trucks and, and wires it from scratch. Um, it's, there's a lot of special things, specialty things involved here, and, and each guy at our shop has one specialty, but they do a little of everything. Is Bob Chandler serious about building winning monster trucks? You bet he is. And his latest creation is in the near lane as we're ready for the first battle against the big boss Ford. Flight. It wasn't even a race. Andy Brass takes Bigfoot into the next round. Once again, landing a little bit sideways, but light years ahead of the new Illinois-based Ford. To continue the first round of elimination side by side, it's now the defending world champion Fred Schaefer and Barefoot in the near lane against the brand new Crimson Crusher Ford on the far side. And Schaefer takes one for the Chevrolet fans. Another runaway that definitely showed the more powerful of the two machines in combat. On the replay, you can see that Schaefer not only got the whole shot, he stretched it from there to the finish line, but the red Ford in the right-hand lane never in the contest. Here's Rob Fusion, the first blood Ford. The independent from Illinois was earlier asked if he thought monster truck teams tended to stick to themselves. No, that, everybody helps each other out of something goes wrong I mean I'd be more than willing to help them out and it, it works both ways they everybody's really good about that certainly the crowd knows full well about the first blood force propensity for winning events in 1991 a true threat for the camel world championship and the number four qualifier in this event lined up in the near lane against the Minnesota Ford called barely tame and problem set in for the first blood Ford Jim Thomas the local hero will defeat the first blood machine in the first round. What an upset as the first blood board apparently never got power in the first half of the course and Thomas advances to round two. We earlier had a chance to discuss the incredible popularity of the Gravedigger Chevy with owner Dennis Anderson. My truck has really gotten popular in the last couple of years because of my wild driving style. It's an old, unique truck. It's a different truck. And I'm, I'm an underdog coming up from the bottom, coming to the top quick. At least, Dennis Anderson has already proven himself to be one of the great drivers in the history of this sport. And here he is against the master of disaster. Anderson drives away with the quickest winning run of the first round of eliminations. An absolutely astounding pass. He gets sideways before the first ramp, lands it straight, but gets sideways again while Doug Spanier had his own problems in the other lane. Absolutely incredible round of competition. It will be Bigfoot, the number one qualifier, against the defending world champ Barefoot in the second round, while Barely Tame, the upset winner over first blood in the first round of competition, will have to take on the awesome Gravedigger Chevrolet in the semi-final round. 
but don't think for a minute that the action is getting close to being over because we still have the continuation of qualifying for the four-car camel shootout in super modified mud racing action still to come from Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. Plus, like we said, one of the most astounding motorcycle stunts ever performed. Will he get out of this one alive? Stay with us. As Greg Noonan's Jeep CJ Funny Car is pulled from 36 inches of mud, we get ready to continue with Super Modified qualifying here at the Nassau Coliseum in Uniondale, New York for the final four-car camel shootout field. Right now, qualifying is led by three-time and defending world champ Tom Martin with a track record 1.86 second blast. And it takes a run of 2.12 seconds just to qualify for the quick four right now. The next machine on the starting line, another New England veteran on the U.S. Harvard Association Tour, the ageless 1967 Ford Bronco of Bill Barrett. The nitrous oxide-injected Ford wedge-powered machine has been around for a long, long time and is still one of the toughest in this part of the country. Remember, it takes a run of 2.122 seconds to qualify for the quick four right now. Barrett, with a little bit of tire spin off the starting line, digs in deep in the sand trap at the finish line of this course. You can see the machine spinning the rear tires violently while the front tires remain hooked up. The elapsed time for the machine, 2.46 seconds will miss the bump spot by a bunch. Like I said, he had to go quicker than 2.12 to become a part of the Camel shootout. On the starting line is the quickest super modified mud racer in history. The world elapsed time record holder from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Jeff Acker's supercharged Chevy-powered Insanity Roadster. The man who ran 1.683 seconds only a few weeks ago. The 1927 Ford Model T Roadster bodied machine is easily one of the most powerful ever created for this sport. 2,000 horsepower worth of fuel-injected, methanol-burning supercharged Chevrolet. The mark to beat to qualify, once again, 2.12 seconds. And along with the event title and the World Championship points, Acker is here for another reason, to beat three-time world champ Tom Martin. An incredible run on the brakes, hard! And he stops within inches of the disqualification banner. Look at this pass in slow motion, picture perfect, then hard on the brakes. The elapsed time, 1.92 seconds. Good for the number two qualifying spot. And it now takes a run of 2.043 seconds to make the program. Here's the wild man of East Coast Mud Racing, Mike Spina, the psychotic beast, supercharged, fuel-injected, Chevy-powered 27 Model T. Staged and waiting for the green light. Spina knows he's got to come up with a good one. He shuts the engine down just a tad early, maybe five feet before the finish line, and he knows it. He had to go quicker than 2.043 seconds to qualify. Spina runs 2.048 seconds, and by five thousandths of a second, will fail to make the final four-car field. What a tough break for Spina. The next machine on the starting line, the one and only Papa Smurf, fuel-injected, nitrous-injected, Chevy Power 23T. And almost immediate problems for the Papa Smurf machine, way down on power. And as soon as he got off the throttle at the finish line, the machine sank like a rock. You can see on the replay, the car did not have enough power to keep the tires above the mud. The rear end continually sinking all the way down, and then watch when he lifts off the throttle. Down she goes. Meanwhile, in the Metrodome in Minneapolis, getting ready for one of the most courageous motorcycle stunt attempts ever is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's Dennis Pino, a protege of the legendary Brian Carson standing off to the side on fire on a Yamaha motorcycle, a mixture of gasoline and napalm. Pino steers the machine into a straight line and takes a head-on hit into a van. An incredible explosion into a line of crushed boxes designed to absorb the impact of Pino's hit. 
Certainly one of the most spectacular attempts ever in his first time ever trying this particular exhibition. The paramedic teams checking out young Dennis Pinto after his first ever attempt at running a motorcycle into a van at speed while on fire. Trying to get him up on his feet, it is obvious that Pinto is shaken. On the replay, you can see that the Speed Sport Uniforms fire suit protected him all the way down from the flames even with part of the bike itself on fire when he hit the approach ramp. Now, as he straightens the bike up and begins hitting upwards of 45 to 50 miles per hour, he has to stand up on the seat of the motorcycle while still burning and line himself up for the ramps and then the hit. Through the explosion, you can see Pinto tumbling, and that indicates that there was a problem. He should have been straight up and down and just sailing into those boxes. The tumble indicates that he probably got his leg caught up in the handlebars before he jumped up to avoid the impact. His wife, Sue, obviously concerned as the paramedics continue attending him. From another angle, watch the point of impact and where Pinto's legs are. And as he tumbles through the fireworks, it appears certain that his left foot was caught in the handlebars at the moment it hit the van. With the fire suit cut away from his injured left leg, Pinto is hoisted into the ambulance for a trip to a downtown hospital. But believe me when I tell you, this guy will be back. the Nassau Coliseum we are down to the final few qualifying attempts for the four car camel shootout in super modified mud racing action the total obsession supercharged Chevy powered Ford Bronco up next trying to run quicker than 2.04 seconds on the brakes hard and the Emmy Maryland Sun sponsored machine will stop in time look at the tire distortion on the rear tires under power near the finish line a rough landing, but an elapsed time of 2.13 seconds comes nine hundredths of a second short. Now for brute power, one of the toughest machines in New England is the risky business. Nitrous oxide injected, Chevrolet powered Jeep CJ funny car. Out of the state of Vermont, one of the only machines on the national tour from that state, this truck is notorious for having enough power for full track wheel stands. Checking the nitrous oxide injection system, now staging up. The front wheels up for most of the course and actually using the ruts at the finish line to slow the machine down. Look at this, 3,000 pounds of Jeep in the air from 1,500 Chevy horsepower on the brakes hard and stopping in time. The Team Risky Business machine runs 2.25 seconds but fails to qualify. And the final attempt will be another nitrous oxide injected monster. In fact, it's the Monster Master fiberglass body Jeep CJ funny car on the line. A brand new machine out of upper New York State. You can see him purging the nitrous oxide system. That's the white vapor you see. 53 degree below zero oxygen injected directly into the engine. The camel shootout. All Staged and waiting for the green light countdown. The visor is dropped and the driver readies himself. Absolutely incredible. 
I cannot believe that the throttle was applied for that long. And as you can see, a mushroom cloud of death smoke emanates from the fuel-injected Chevrolet. That thing is a cinder. On the replay, look at the front wheels. No power was going to the front end of the machine. It had only rear-wheel drive, and two-wheel drive won't cut it in 36 inches of mud. Somehow, the pilot managed to stay in the throttle until it literally had no more left. And now, sits resting on the bottom of this three-foot deep pit, waiting to be hoisted out. But if nothing else, we're down to the four qualifiers in the Camel Shootout who will battle it out in this super-modified mud racing bash for the overall championship. As the ground crews hook up yet another hapless machine, we've got a chance to look at final qualifying statistics. The number one man on the field at a track record 1.863 second run, Tom Martin, the three-time world champion, his brand new 32 Chevy, the Super Trooper entry. Number two, his arch rival and another contestant for the world championship in the Camel Series, Jeff Acker's Insanity Roadster. Followed by one for the Ford fans, David Ray's supercharged Ranger, Midnight Magic, and the other half of the two-car Tom Martin team, the Mud Patrol 32 Chevy. Don't go away. At any given U.S. Armored Association Camel National Championship event, everybody has a good time. Even the security guards. The U.S. Hot Rod Association is the best in motorsports. Each year, the U.S. Hot Rod Association sponsors more than 50 events from coast to coast. See the stars of super tracks in person at a stadium or at an arena near you. USHRA competition features the best in mud racing, all classes of pulling, and, of course, monster truck racing. It's great family fun. So watch for the stars of the U.S. Hot Rod Association coming soon to an arena near you. Meanwhile, here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, we are down to the final four machines in the semi-final round of this U.S. Hobbit Association Camel Monster Truck War. And believe me when I tell you, the first pair up could present the tightest battle we've seen yet. It'll be number one qualifier Bigfoot, who defeated the brand new Big Boss Ford in the very first round with an incredible pass up against the reigning U.S. Hobbit Association Camel World Champion, Fred Schaefer and the supercharged barefoot Chevrolet, who dusted the Crimson Crusher first round while grabbing more air than anybody in this incredible flight. Ford versus Chevrolet. The reigning world champ in the far lane, the best known truck in motorsports history in the near lane. And problems for Schaefer! Right off the starting line, and Andy Brass will drive Bigfoot into the final round. They left the line together, but right at the Christmas tree, watch Barefoot. It nosedives. It lost power so quick, it almost had to be a problem in the transmission. Andy Brass sideways in the air, a rough landing, but it was more than enough to cover the hapless Chevrolet's effort on the far side. What a tough break for the reigning world champ. But with the big foot forward in the final round, it's now time to determine his opponent for the championship. Dennis Anderson, the North Carolina driver of the awesome Grave Digger 50 Chevrolet, put on this incredible exhibition of power in the first round against the master of disaster Chevrolet, while his opponent scored the biggest upset in the entire first stanza of eliminations. Jim Thomas and the barely tamed Ford upset the number four qualifier, Rob Fusion, the first blood Ford, in one that really stunned the local fans. Now another Ford and Chevrolet matchup, staged and ready. And Anderson will walk into the final round. Absolutely no problems for the Grave Digger to pick up that win. On the replay, you can see that Thomas in the right-hand lane wasn't even staged up straight and was especially crooked when he hit the cars, but watch the landing from Grave Digger. Only Dennis Anderson can give you that kind of excitement. We did have a chance to catch up with Fred Schaefer after his second round defeat at the hands of Bigfoot. Uh, transmission second gear, uh, smokes clutches in second. Did you do that during the first round? Did you know that that was going to be a problem? Uh, the first round, it was acting funny, but I wanted to go ahead and try it, and it, it wasn't there. So you didn't think that you, there was a possibility, I should say, that you didn't have it going up? Yeah, there was a possibility, but the motor just revved, and it kind of went neutral. Seems like every time this stuff happens, it happens against the people you want to beat the worst. Yeah, I had a pretty good qualifying run. I was really counting on being in the finals there. That's the way it goes, but obviously it's repairable, right? Yeah, no problem, yeah. We'll see you again. Thank you, Brad. 
So the finals are set in both the Bud Ranks and the Monster Truck War. Bigfoot versus Crave Digger. Don't you dare call us see him in Uniondale, New York, and we are just about ready to get underway with the four quickest qualifiers at this U.S. Hobbit Association Super Modified Mud Racing Championship and the Camel Shootout. The four qualifiers included the defending world champ Tom Martin, followed closely by his arch rival Jeff Acker, the Mud Patrol machine qualified for it, but number three was the 85 world champ David Ray. And we talked to him about what the track was going to be like coming into this championship dash. Well, I don't think it's going to be that much better now when after that truck got stuck, but you never can tell. Did you honestly think that the 199 was going to hold? I had no idea that was going to hold. I didn't think so at all. Well, this will at least put you in a situation where you can at least battle the quicker guys out there. And this is a truck that's already proven to be the quickest of its type. Is there anything that you think this truck with its extra weight has an advantage? Um, not in that track at all, but we did come out and change some bars and let a little air out of the tires, so hopefully um, well, we can do it. Well, David Ray, for one, had better hope he can against the likes of this man. At six foot six, 375 pounds, he's always referred to as the world's largest world champion. This is Tom Martin, the three-time and defending U.S. Hobbit Association camel title holder from Portage, Indiana, and his nitrous oxide-injected 588 cubic inch Chevy-powered 32 coupe called Super Trooper. As the first man to qualify for the quick four in the camel shootout, he will get first shot in the shootout to set the pace for the title. An incredible run, but sideways at the finish line, and Tom Martin has disqualified himself by taking down a finish line marker pole. Look at the wheel stand when Tom drops the hammer with 1,600 horsepower. That's why it went out of bounds. The front end was never on the ground to steer it, and Tom Martin suffers a rare disqualification in a final round. Yeah, I know. The holes are terrible. It pulled me over. I hope we can do it tomorrow because this car is fast. I got to admit that uh, you shut it off an honest eight or six, uh, six or eight feet before the finish line, so it was on a pass. It hooked up a lot better. The changes worked. Yeah, I was hoping when I lifted it, pulled back over in, but it didn't. The elapsed time was a 183, so Martin actually ran quicker than he did in qualifying. That would have been a new track record. But here is the underdog in this field. Supercharged Ford power in a 3,000-pound Ford Ranger pickup. One of the last of the full-body trucks in this sport, David Ray, the 85 world champ out of Playstow, New Hampshire, in a machine giving up and on a 700 pounds to its opponents. Ray is now free to set the pace. Tom Martin's run was disqualified. There is no leader. On the brakes hard, sliding towards the end of the course, but he stops it in time and he knows it. Look at the launch on this thing. Perfect weight transfer. The front wheel's just barely skimming the surface. The rear tire's digging in. The elapsed time, 1.78 seconds. One of the quickest runs ever for a full body truck and a new track record. I'm getting better at this after all this time. All right, yeah! This is the best year you've had in an honest six. Oh, yeah, this is great. I owe oh, it all of my guys that helped me, I'm telling you. Those guys are fantastic. Remember, you got the winningest vehicle in history and the national record holder going up behind you. It's going to be interesting. That's all right. I'm so happy. I did fantastic. Good job, guy. Thank you very much. Yeah! It's been a long time since we've seen David Ray that thrilled. But as we pointed out, here is the winningest mud vehicle in history. This is the car that took Tom Martin to three world championships and some 41 national event victories. It's now driven by his new partner, Paul Schaefer, a longtime oval track stock car racer in his rookie year of mud racing. You saw him run 2.04 seconds in qualifying for the number four spot in this four car field. Now, can the rookie driver pick up his first major title of the 1991 season? Incredible wheel stand produced more by engine torque than by traction. Watch this thing weave the line and keep an eye on the left front wheel as it just keeps going up and up and up until it's twisted at the finish line on a 1.81 second run. That's the quickest pass he's ever made. Well, that's the fastest I've ever been so far, so I'm happy with that. I was just going to say, it is the quickest run you've made since taking over the reins of this car. Was there something right up that you changed before the shootout? No, not for the shootout. I, I forgot to shift on the first round, but I shifted that time, so uh, I'm getting better. 
Well, that will leave the final driver in this four-car camel shootout. It's the world of last time record holder, Milwaukee's Jeff Acker in the Insanity Supercharged Chevy Powered Roaster. And considering that the current leader ran 1.78 seconds with a 3,000-pound vehicle, you'd have to think that this machine, weighing in at about 2,400 pounds, should be able to surpass that mark. David Ray's Midnight Magic Ford Powered Ranger leads the field. Acker must go quicker than 1.783 seconds with Chevy Power to win this Camel title. And Acker shuts the engine down five feet before the finish line. That may have hurt him. He had to go quicker than 1.783 seconds. Acker runs 1.794 seconds with the brakes locked up 10 feet before the finish line pulls. He shut it off early, and it cost him the race. Yeah, I didn't worry about the stop line. I shouldn't have, but I did. 11 thousandths of a second. It probably wouldn't have taken more than a foot or two more in the throttle. Yeah, it's... I don't know, I guess I don't like sliding through the stop line this far from home. Still an incredible effort, especially in the sense that this track was so tricky in the first round that you managed to come back like this. Yeah, it seemed like, I don't know, later in the track, it seems like it wants to hold more power. The starting line's pretty bad, but I was worried about down here. Here's a look at the one driver who figured out every single aspect of this particular track. Perfect weight transfer, incredible traction, and driving beyond what was needed. David Ray, the winner of the Super Modified Mud Racing Championship in the Midnight Magic Ford Ranger. As if that battle was not wild enough, the ultimate monster truck war is still yet to come. Bigfoot versus Gravedigger for another U.S. Helmet Association Championship. Stay with us. The anticipation here at the Metrodome for this Monster Truck Championship final literally has to be felt to be believed. And considering that Bob Chandler, who created the Bigfoot Ford, created the sport of monster truck racing at the same time, we asked him how much it takes to campaign his incredible operation through the year. To build a truck nowadays is somewhere around $70,000. Uh, they're actually cheaper to put together now than they were years ago. They're lighter. Uh, there's a lot more um, technique put in it, a lot of uh, racing uh, I'm trying to think of a lot technology. of technology put in it, definitely. Um, I really don't know what I spent on a whole for a year. I know, I know by the time I sit at the end of the year, I end up with uh, about a zero profit margin. How many people does Bigfoot Enterprises employ right now? We have about 45 today. And of them, uh, we're looking at how many drivers, 10 or a dozen? No, I actually only have five regular drivers. Some of the crew people, they're backup drivers. When I when I need a show where there where there's not a racing involved, where they got a display or just to drive around, then one of the backup drivers, the crew people, end up taking another truck out and, and drive it. Is there basically one crew per truck as far as uh, maintenance during the week? Definitely. Now we have have mechanics at the shop that do all the, all the detail checking of the truck. If there's engine work to be did, need to be done, transmission, axles, whatever. The driver is responsible for his own truck. The driver stays with that truck. He works on it when he gets back to the shop. In fact, most of my crew, they, they work at least six days a week. They rarely have a day off. Uh, but it's two guys per truck when they go out, and sometimes we have a camera person go with them. How much uh, equipment total are we looking at? Obviously, you've got the trucks, you've got the crew, you've got the drivers, even the building, which is uh, sizable in itself. But what else has to go into the background of these things for operation? Well, we have an entire machine shop for, for building the chassis and part of some of the engine work. We have a, an engine room, a uh, clean room, supposedly, where we put the assemble engines. Uh, we have people that specialize in wiring. Uh, one of our crew starts from scratch with these trucks and, and wires it from scratch. Um, there's a lot of special things, specialty things involved here, and, and each guy at our shop has one specialty, but they do a little of everything. The big question is, can Bigfoot Enterprises get any larger? Uh, I'm really not looking to get larger. In fact, I'm wanting to cut back. That's This year I'm not running. Last year I ran 12 trucks several days of the year. I'm not going to do that anymore. The, the older trucks, are they're outclassed. Um, to me, they should be put in a museum or put somewhere, you know, um, in fact, what we've done at our shop, our showroom now is half museum. We would leave Bigfoot one in there and a ranger and sometimes the, uh, the track vehicle. But uh, I'm not going to tour as many vehicles and I'm not going to tour as much of a crew. I'm going to put better shows on. I think I put some bad shows on last year that I didn't, I didn't like. Is this a situation where you would also like to concentrate on the Camel World Championship? Oh, definitely. Yeah, we got, I uh, put my newest truck in the series. It's Bigfoot 9, so uh, I'm hoping Jim will win. 
Some very interesting observations from the father of this sport, but Dennis Anderson's Gravedigger has become just as tough with a different approach in technology. I know from uh, last week, I did have an advantage coming out of the hole because I had a lot more weight transfer on the back of the truck. At this point where you're solidly in the top four in the Camel World Championship points race, you've got to be looking forward to a confrontation with Bigfoot and Barefoot and the rest of them. Oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely here. You know, I'm trying to catch, catch up in these points, and uh, they're drawing near, and I want to I accumulate some points so that I'll, you know, I'll accumulate enough points so I'll have uh, some downtime if I need it, you know, but I've, I'm just trying to advance as hard as I can go. There's a lot of tough trucks here, and, uh, you know, all these guys are coming out with new trucks. That uh, The new Barefoot truck, he's really tough. Uh, I just ran with him last week for the first time, and he's pretty much got it together. At this point in the season, you're looking at a tremendous amount of spectator popularity for this particular truck, but you're also looking at a, a real war of horsepower. How do you compare this truck's actual full throttle power to the rest of the t machines? Well, I don't know. It's, uh, as far as engine size, these guys, everybody else here has got a bigger cubic inch motor, but I've, all, I've never ran big cubic inch motors. My motor will turn as many RPMs, if not more, than a lot of the motors here. And I just kind of make it up in RPMs, you know, but some of these uh, bigger motors, they put out a lot more torque than my motor does. But, uh, you know, all the power in the world don't do you any good if you don't hook it to the ground. Is this also going to be a situation where it's going to be Dennis, An Dennis Anderson throwing caution to the wind, as always, just trying to get around these guys? Exactly. A man of few words who has almost always let his driving do the storytelling. If you remember in the semifinal round, it was Bigfoot over a breaking barefoot. And once the Big Blue Ford has gotten past the defending world champion, one has to wonder if Andy Brass can be stopped at all. In the other semifinal round, we saw Dennis Anderson easily handle Jim Thomas. The Minnesota Ford in the right-hand lane running into problems off the line, crooked start, but Anderson bounced his way into the championship dash like only he can. And now it's a war between Ford and Chevrolet. Who will survive the Grave Digger Bigfoot Showdown? You can't afford to miss this one. The are over. The pre-race talk is finished. It's time to put them on the line and run them for this U.S. Hobbit Association Camel title. Grave Digger versus Bigfoot here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. As they move up to stage, we're ready for the final round. They leave the line. An incredible race side by side across the finish line. But the U.S. Harvard Association officials are saying that Bigfoot may have fouled. We'll look at the slow motion replay. And by that much, you can see that Andy Brass left the line before the green light came on. Dennis Anderson wins. I probably should have sat up there before the line and just took a couple minutes to myself and mellowed out a little bit. You know, I was a little anxious getting in the line. I knew we was going to have to have to play the light real good. The, uh, Dennis is running good times, you know, so it was going to be a real close race, and especially in this short of a course, they don't give you much, and the light's the big thing, and we just blew it. I knew Andy had rolled out a little bit, but I wasn't going to stop and restart, so it was too late. I just went ahead and went for it. I should point out that really the difference at the finish line was not much more than the amount that ran Andy rolled out. It would have been that close. Right, yeah. I know uh, Andy, he's hooking up pretty good out here, and he's got a real good launch once he leaves the ramp. I really favored that right lane. He had lane choice, and I couldn't get my side, but i done the best with what I had. Ladies and gentlemen. As he always does. Dennis Anderson has put the green Chevrolet from Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, on top. The Grave Digger is the champion, at least for this week. I'm Brett Kepner. We'll see you next time on Super Tracks.